noleus in verba. In modern American English, that means take no one's word. It's the slogan of England's oldest scientific organization, the Royal Society. At first glance, this slogan might seem a little bit antisocial, but the strict following of this simple rule, I would say, is the reason science is so incredibly productive. In science, there is no pope, no dictator, no king. At least, there's not supposed to be. Instead, observation rules supreme. Do you think you discovered something interesting? Okay, show us. This thing that we call science, it can be imagined as a chain with three links. As a scientist, your job is to first identify a problem that needs solving. Second, solve that problem by situating yourself to make and record detailed observations. Usually that means conducting an experiment. And then finally, you must communicate your results. In most cases, successful communication means writing a peer-reviewed scientific paper. One written so well that other people will actually want to read it. They need to understand it when they read it. And the paper also needs enough detail so that if any reader doubts your claims, they can redo your experiment and make the same or similar observations for themselves. Nullius in verba. Take no one's word. Ultimately, any piece of research is only as good as its weakest link. However strong the first two links are, if the writing is weak, the chain will break. What's the point of doing all that difficult research if no one is ever going to learn about it, right? Normally, here on the Stated Clearly YouTube channel, I write all of the scripts for these animations myself. But today's video is special, it's a book review, and most of what you just heard me say came directly from this new book, Scientific Papers Made Easy, How to Write with Clarity and Impact in the Life Sciences. It functions as an entire course on how to write a good scientific paper, one that will actually be read and understood. In other words, this little book is about how to take your research and state it clearly. Stuart West, one of the authors, is a colleague of mine. He's been the script advisor and the science advisor for a bunch of Stated Clearly animations. For this reason, some might be a bit worried that my review of his book could be biased. Fair enough, but the reason that I first reached out to Stuart West to work with me on Stated Clearly projects is because I was so impressed with how clearly he wrote in his scientific papers. He does a lot of work in mathematical evolutionary modeling. These sorts of projects can be super complicated, but he's able to break them down into very digestible pieces, carefully explain his reasoning, and then just present the mathematics in plain English. And he does it in a way that I have just never seen. Now that he's written a book showing other scientists how they can do this as well, of course, I am going to promote this as far and wide as I possibly can. Lindsay Turnbull studies plant ecology. Along with her many scientific papers, she also writes for the general public where extreme clarity is essential for success. These people know what they're doing. If you know a scientist, please share this video with them because during my career as a science educator, I have read hundreds of research papers and I'm sad to report that much of modern scientific writing it is mind-numbingly complicated, and often for no good reason. Check out this paper written by the late Stephen Jay Gould. Keep in mind when you look at this that Professor Gould was an amazing public speaker and an amazing science writer when his aim was to connect with students or the general public. But when he was writing for other scientists, he fell into this trap, a very common trap, of thinking that he must use excessive science speak. By science speak, I mean this snobby mixture of jargon overkill, jargon not for the sake of clarity, but for the sake of showing off how many words one knows, jargon overkill combined with needlessly long, brain-twisting sentences. I dare you to try to understand just the first string of words in the abstract of this paper he wrote here. Seriously, give it a shot. Pause this video, read through just the first sentence, and tell me what you think about it down in the comment section. Admittedly, this is an extra bad case of science writing, but sadly, this brand of word salad, or what I call jargon vomit, this can be found to one degree or another in many, if not most, scientific papers published today. I think it's safe to say that the majority of scientists are not trying to confuse their audiences on purpose, 
But writing with clarity, it's just a difficult thing to do. It's a skill that must be learned. And that is why this book exists. A standard scientific paper is made of the following parts. Title, abstract, introduction, methods, results, and discussion. This book has an entire chapter dedicated to each one of those parts, including bonus chapters on editing, on how to write a cover letter, and then how to make good use of figures. One of my favorite parts of the book is that each little bit of advice is followed by real instances of horrible science writing, and then it follows up that horrible writing with examples of how to rewrite that with clarity and impact. For example here, the addition of soluble nutrients caused plants to achieve a higher final biomass than plants grown with the same volume of water. Translation, the fertilized plants grew larger. I love this so much because if you're a young scientist right now, there really is kind of a weird social pressure to add unnecessary science talk to your papers. This is, I'm, I'm telling you, this is a culture. This is a cultural problem. And here we have two Oxford professors, two Oxford professors that have published a lot of papers, and those papers have been read by a lot of people. They're making fun of this whole science talk thing, and they're giving us all permission to just write the way that we speak. Just communicate clearly in your papers, for goodness sake. Again, this book acts as a full course on science writing. Many chapters end with links to online quizzes and exercises to help you practice what you've learned and solidify your skills. Scientific Papers Made Easy, How to Write with Clarity and Impact in the Life Sciences. I am John Perry from Stated Clearly. So long for now. Stay curious.